Hi, welcome to the October weather trend forecast. This month is often associated with wet and windy conditions, famously the Great Storm of 1987, or perhaps foggy and anticyclonic ones. But very occasionally, it can deliver an early taste of winter. These photographs I took in 2008, October the 29th, the one on the left is from Regent's Park in central London. The middle and right hand side ones are of my garden in Burke Hampstead. I think the snow was about three or four centimetres deep and it came as quite a shock to the flowers which were still fully in bloom at that point. So what can we expect this year? I'll start by taking a look at the first 10 days or so running this animation. It's based on data from the GFS model and it's initiated at 18 GMT Saturday the 1st. And to start off with, there's an Atlantic flow covering the UK, showers there mostly in western parts, in central and eastern counties it's mainly dry. Now in the short term, the Atlantic continues to keep things unsettled in the north and west, but high pressure often keeps it drier in the south and the east until Wednesday and by this point there's quite a lot of uncertainty about the details. On this model run an area of low pressure brings heavy outbreaks of rain to all parts of the UK but even the southeast on this one gets very wet but I say I think there's quite a bit of uncertainty about whether or not the rain will be as heavy in southern counties as this is suggesting. Nonetheless if I continue it the low pressure moves away. In the days which follow, high pressure to the south has more influence at times, generally the wettest conditions in the north and west. And then at the very end, Monday the 10th, Tuesday the 11th, high pressure has more uh, control over the UK's weather full stop. So all parts then becoming drier with the Atlantic influence really just there flirting with the far northwest. What does that mean in terms of the temperatures? Possibly quite warm early on, or certainly very mild. Monday the 3rd of October here, maximums around 19, 20 Celsius in the south, cooler there in the northwest. Moving forwards to Thursday, still reasonable. Temperatures have dipped a little bit, the warmest air has been pushed away, but nonetheless, 16, 17s in the south, 13s, 14s there in much of the north. There is, as I say, though, that question mark about the wet and windy conditions pushing southeastwards at this point or around about this time due to that area of low pressure. Moving forwards to Sunday the 9th, maximums now not changing a great deal, still close to the seasonal norm there in the southern half of the UK, a little bit cooler um, in the north, certainly there in Scotland, single figures being shown. And possibly some colder nights on the way if this is right because of that area of high pressure which was building towards the 10th and the 11th of the month. This is shown minimums on um, Monday the uh, 10th, so a frost, at least a ground frost in much of the north, still significantly milder at this point in the south. A few charts from the Mograx model just to try and paint some of the details in a little bit more clearly, so York temperature charts, 1.5 meters, so down at the surface, reasonable. Teens there, 16, 17. There's a warm up around the 4th of October, going maybe close to 20 Celsius, and then things tend to cool down a little bit beyond it, but all in all, not too bad. The mean surface level pressure forecast for York from MoGreps again, clearly. Pressure's rising through the first few days. It's then dipping quite sharply. There's good support there for this to happen. So it's associated with that area of low pressure, which could be seen on the animation. The questions around it, though, I think, are really about how active it will be as it moves southeastwards and whether or not the very wet conditions make it down into southern England or not. Once it moves away, though, pressure rises again, and then the runs start to diverge, which suggests a wider range of possible outcomes, very typical as you look further ahead, of course. And the uh, wind gusts from MoGreps, 
possibly a windy period of weather here showing up between the 5th and the 6th of October. One or two of the runs going up to 50 miles an hour. The overall theme though is for windier conditions to be more confined to the north and the west for much of the first third of the month but certainly something to keep an eye on there. Once more it really depends much on how the area of low pressure behaves and develops the track it takes. Rainfall. Well these are for days 0 to 10, ECM on the left, GFS on the right. Quite consistent, surprisingly so really at this range. The wettest conditions very much in the west and the north, especially the northwest there. The red shading showing high totals in western Scotland. Even the southeast sees some rain. GFS phone suggesting not a great deal. One or two places there in central England and southeastern uh, England only recording between 5 and 10 millimetres through the entire period. ECM going for a wetter scenario in the southeast with 20 to 30 millimetres of rain more widely. Well, that covers the first third of the month. What about the second third? Trends and probabilities at this range and the 16 day GEFS plot for London to begin with. Air mass temperatures across the top here fluctuating around the average. There's, there's quite a big spread, not huge, probably reasonable degree of uh, consistency here, which is supporting the idea of relatively close to average air mass temperatures. The risk of rain is ongoing. It's perhaps ticking up a little bit later on. Not many spikes there through the first few days. High pressure quite possibly being influential at that stage at least. The mean surface level pressure data table, just to see if it can provide some more insight into whether that's the case or not. Here it is for London. Well, the yellows, 1,011 to 1,025 millibars are the biggest share in these columns through most of a period, although later on they decrease. Quite interestingly, at the end there, from more orange runs, so high pressure, 1,026 to 1,040, but also more of the green ones, which are 996 to 1,010, suggesting that both the chance of higher pressure dominated uh, setups and lower pressure dominated ones are increasing. It doesn't mean that the computer model's clueless about how things are going to shape up. It's, it's literally saying, what I've just tried to explain, but the chance of both low pressure dominance and high pressure dominance is increasing. There are more runs going for the more extreme scenarios than there are ones going for the more uh, middle of the road run so solutions, the yellow uh, shading, which is showing, the, showing those. Now, going up to Glasgow to see the view in the Northwest. Temperatures here, MS temperatures, a little bit below the average, generally more of an anomaly here than there was in the south. Rainfall across the bottom for more spikes showing up and the number of them increases later on. The uh, surface level pressure data table for Glasgow follows a similar sort of pattern to the London one. Yellow's dominant early on, but there's quite a bit of orange even here in the northwest and likewise more greens and blues at the very end begin to turn up as well. Once again, the picture is a growing chance of low, lower pressure or higher pressure runs through the middle part of the uh, fruit of the month. On to the final third of the month, and at this range, it's really just about the general direction of travel. As I always emphasize, will it be warmer or cooler than the norm? wetter or drier. GFS 35 day air mass uh, forecast chart for London. Really fluctuating around the average there. The ensemble mean the purple line is above a thick black line, the 30 year norm to begin with. Later on perhaps dipping a little below it at times, but not very marked. The comparable plot for Glasgow. This is also similar. The Purple line starting off above the black line 
And later on, perhaps a signal there for it to be a little bit cooler relative to that 30 year average, at least on this run. The mean surface level pressure chart for London. At this time of the year, the average pressure is around about 1,015 millibars. And it is fluctuating on this uh, GEFS 35 day forecast. Probably, if anything, close to or slightly above the norm rather than below it, but there isn't a great deal on offer there in terms of strong signals for the, uh, for, for there to be a big anomaly. The, anom the uh, weekly anomaly chart, pressure anomaly chart, so this one begins Friday the 14th, once again generated from the GFS 35, reinforces that message. If anything, there's a positive anomaly developing to the west in central and eastern counties, it's very average. And moving forwards a week, so starting the 21st, the positive anomaly to the west has strengthened and it's pushing in across the UK, possibly therefore suggesting high pressure will be centred in the Atlantic. That would indicate the chance at least of drier conditions in the west, somewhat wetter ones further east, perhaps with low pressure areas and centred somewhere close to Scandinavia. Could also be a little bit cooler than the norm, but the 850 HPA temperature anomaly chart suggests that as well. This is for the week beginning the 14th, so again, the weekly chart. The reds, positive anomalies, so slightly above the norm, and the blues below it. There isn't really a strong deviation here, just a little above it there in the west and very close to it in central and eastern counties. Moving forwards to the week beginning the 21st, not much has changed. High pressure, as I was suggesting, could be centred to the west and maybe the air under it's not particularly cold, it's very close to the average. Just a chance there of cooler conditions in the east, especially over continental Europe, but not big anomalies at all. It would suggest though, at least if high pressure was building from the west, some chilly nights would be a risk, a growing chance of frost and fog. And of course, if fog formed and lingered through the days, temperatures down at ground level would be pegged back sharply. So to try and summarize the month, the first half is currently looking mixed. Wet periods most frequent in the north and the west, but all areas could see rain and strong winds at times. Generally though, driest in the south and the east. Very mild or even quite warm for a time, but later on temperatures become closer to the average and there could be some chilly nights. The second half of the month, overall probably a little bit drier than the average, a chance of it being somewhat wetter in the east with high pressure maybe centred uh, close to western parts of the UK or in the Atlantic at least. Temperatures fluctuate around the seasonal norm and later on there is an increasing chance of cold nights, so perhaps foggy and frosty. And as I just mentioned, if fog did form widely and lingered into the day, temperatures would be suppressed more generally. Well, there we have it. Quite a mixed month, I think, on the whole. Some rain for everybody, but wettest conditions at least through the first half, more often than not in the north and the west. I'm not expecting scenes like the ones on the photographs that I showed earlier, the October snow from 2008 in southern Britain. You never know though, of course, winter could arrive, but it's not what the computer models are really pointing towards at this stage. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.